Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Miles and I like to talk about books. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate you. Today I am starting what is going to be a two to three day journey. Hi Addy. Um, I am celebrating the Halloween season and I thought it would be fun to do a readathon for the first time ever, but I didn't want to just do any readathon. So I thought, let's do a 24 hour Goosebumps readathon where all I am allowed to read is R.L. Stein's Goosebumps. I have talked before on this channel about my love for Goosebumps, and I am also working on a video that is like a long term project of reading and ranking every Goosebumps book. So I'll have that out eventually. I thought this readathon would help me get like jump started on that project. And I also thought it would just be like a fun little Halloween video for y'all. So tonight my girlfriend just moved in with me and we are busy moving and doing that kind of stuff. So I'm mostly gonna be listening to audiobooks. But then tomorrow I am, I have the day off and I think I'm gonna have the house to myself most of the day. So I'll be doing a lot more reading that day. I'm not gonna be doing like a straight shot 24 hours because I don't hate myself. And I've seen other um, YouTubers that I really like, like Allison Pages talking about like doing these 24 hour readathons and splitting them up to be kind to yourself. So that's what I'm going to do. It's still going to be a lot more reading than I have been doing because I've been in kind of like a little bit of a reading slump lately. Either this will make it better and I'll get out of my reading slump or this will be like 24 hours of torture and I'm gonna hate my life after this. So you guys get to come along and see what happens. But yeah, I am going to get started. I am gonna start listening to an audiobook, I'm doing some chores around the house. I'm gonna make a nice dinner tonight. I think my girlfriend and I are gonna decorate for Halloween tonight. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a sweet, fun time. And I am starting by listening to The Curse of the Mummy by R.L. Stein. So I am gonna get started on that and I will check in with you guys in a little while. On this this vlog, I'm gonna be doing some fun Halloween spooky stuff. So I hope you enjoy get a cup of tea, make a nice little coffee, and let's do it. Hello, outfit change. I don't know why I wasn't wearing this in the very beginning. I'm an hour and a half in and I am 75% done with my first book, The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. I am making cookies. I am making soup. It's a good time. I'm having fun so far. This one, honestly, is better than I expected it to be, so. I am like two hours and 15 minutes in. I just finished The Curse of the Mummy, and it was okay. It was it had scary moments and it did like, it was the most like violent Goosebumps book I have ever read. And it like dealt with some serious like near death experiences, which was kind of crazy. And it was kind of violent. I was very surprised. It's an early book in the Goosebumps series. So I think it was before like somebody told him to like tone it down. But so that was interesting. So I, I did enjoy that part, but it was also, I feel like the mummy stuff was done in kind of like a culturally insensitive way. So I, I didn't really enjoy that. So I am not loving this one. I'm probably gonna give it like a two and a half out of five. I don't know. It was scary, but I also don't know how I feel about that. So I am starting the sequel though, <laughs> Return of the Mummy. These are both the ones that like I wanna read the least. So I'm just getting them out of the way. I just don't want to read these ones, but I figured let's just do it while I'm doing stuff. Good morning. It is 9.50 in the morning. I'm about five hours into the challenge. I have finished two books, but I am almost done with a third one and I am halfway done with a fourth one. 
So I've been listening to a couple audiobooks and physically reading. Last night I read One Day at Horrorland in one sitting, and this is definitely holding up to be one of my favorite Goosebumps books. So I'm excited to see if anything today tops it. I'll talk more about it in a little while. I'm about to go grab breakfast with my friend and I don't want to be late. And then I just started reading this morning, Stay Out of the Basement. Both of these are really, really solid. I love Horrorland and I also really like Stay Out of the Basement. I really love the TV episodes of both of these are like two of my favorites. So I'm trying to not let that like influence my opinion on the books too much. I am almost done, literally like 15 minutes away from being done with Return of the Mummy. And I'm, I, I don't really like it. It's kind of just the same plot as the first one. And the first one wasn't even that good. So meh, but I am probably gonna start another audiobook after that. So far, I'm averaging out to like one book every, oh, like a little over an hour. So I feel pretty good about that right now. Right now I have like the whole day ahead of me. I'm gonna be doing a lot of physical reading, but I also have stuff to do around the house. So I will be continuing listening to some audiobooks as well. So I don't go too crazy. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys soon. I'm out on my porch reading Stay Out of the Basement and I feel like this one is pretty good so far. It really plays on like the fear that your parents are hiding something from you or your parents are lying to you. And like that is really creepy from the point of a kid. So I'm enjoying this one so far. Also listening to Vampire Breath, which is fun so far. Just got to the point where the main characters found a like hidden tunnel in one of their houses and they are finding there's a vampire in a coffin in this tunnel. They're just uncovering the vampire. So I just finished Stay Out of the Basement, and this might be my favorite one that I've read so far. It's really creepy. If there's cuts, it's because cars are going by. But like, as I said before, like this plays the, with the idea that like your parent is not really your parent and that kind of stuff. But so if you don't know, spoilers for the book and the episode, because I think it pretty much follows it on a pretty exact um, basis, but they find out that their dad that they've been with the whole um, book is not actually their dad, and they find him in the basement downstairs. Their dad is like a mad scientist kind of dude trying to crossbreed plants with people, and or what he tells them with animals. They go to the basement, even though they're not supposed to when he's gone, and they find another like a copy of their dad in the closet tied up and both of them have some plant features so they can't decide which is which and then they end up finding out that the dad that they've been with the whole book was fake was a plant copy and the real dad kills the fake dad by like literally cutting him down the middle with an axe which is crazy and also, like, I don't know, with a lot of Goosebumps books, obviously, they're really fun and silly. But then you think about, like, the actual implications behind the story. And it's really creepy that these kids were just living in the same house with this weird, creepy carbon copy of their dad for, like, a week. So... This one, I think, is my favorite so far. I also love the cover art on this. When I was at a yard sale last week, I found, like, 10 Goosebumps books and a bunch of Fear Street books, which was really awesome. So that's giving me, like, most of my material for today. 
so that's what I am up to. I really, really enjoyed this one. This, I think, is my favorite one that I've read in this video, for sure. But yeah, so I will check in with you guys in a little bit. So it is 1.18, and I am around hour 7, right before 7 hours in. And I'm still having a good time. I just finished my fifth book, Vampire Breath. This one was fun. It was, it was a fun little adventure. It had a really fun twist. I haven't talked about any of the classic, iconic Goosebumps twists yet, and I enjoyed this one. So, I, I'm afraid that this vlog, this 24-hour readathon, is going to bleed into like two and a half days. I just don't have that kind of time, unfortunately. Tomorrow I work 10 to 6, so I think kind of my plan to get the full 24 hours even like I feel bad that this is like I feel like this is kind of cheating but also like I'm a working guy I have shit to do I have places to be I need to make money so I just squeezed this into a time that it would work for me so I hope that's okay I know there's no like code of honor when it comes to these 24 hour readathons but I'm still like I hope nobody is like mad at me I don't think they will be and if you are that's like classist, so don't be classist because I am trying to just work and make a living, guys. Anyways, I'm having a good time. I need to make some lunch. Right now, I am sticking to listening to audiobooks until I make some lunch. And like, I said this before, my girlfriend and I have moved in together and there is so much to do in the home. So I am kind of getting that together. We spent a lot of our time getting the kitchen together. We've only been here for a week so far. Um, so, spent a lot of time getting the kitchen together, but our bedroom has been totally lacking. So I'm working on the bedroom right now and just getting everything cozy. But yeah, that's what I'm up to right now. I need to make something for lunch and then I will check in in a little while. But I enjoyed Vampire Breath. I don't know what I'm going to listen to next, so we'll see, we'll see what's up next. Let me show you my physical TBR. These are the other books that I have with me that I am looking forward to reading. I'm probably gonna need more than these, so I think I'll like check out an ebook on my Kindle, but this is what I have right now. And if it's an absolute necessity to get more, I will go to the video store down the street from me because they have Goosebumps stuff. So, I'm really excited to read The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. I don't think I have ever read this one. It's like 50 something in the series and I was so scared of this cover that I don't think I ever read this, which is kind of funny. So, got that. Welcome to Camp Nightmare. This is number nine in the series. Go Eat Worms, number 21 in the series. Piano Lessons Can Be Murder, which is 13. The Horror at Camp Jelly Jam, which is 33. And Be Careful What You Wish For, which is also like, this is number 12. I am concerned by the subject matter and the cover that this one is also going to be culturally insensitive. In my tier list, am I gonna have to have a whole category that's like, culturally insensitive. That's kind of a bummer. What the heck, R.L. Stein? I really thought, I really didn't think there was anything that bad in these books. And like, who am I to say what's that bad and what's not that bad? I feel like the mummy ones were both like, they handled it okay, but definitely not well. I just, spoiler alert for the, uh, Curse of the Mummy's Tomb and Return of the Mummy. I think that's what it's called. Um, both of the times, like, Egyptian people t that are, like, working on these, like, archaeological digs turn out to be the villain. And that just doesn't sit right with me. I don't know, though. Like, who am I to say if that's offensive or not? It just doesn't sit right with me. I don't know. All of these I found at that yard sale that I was telling y'all about, and they're all first editions from like the 1990s. And this is, I think it's from the late 90s. Let's see. And it's just, it's interesting that for me, maybe this isn't interesting to anybody else. 
This was published in 1997, and these were published in 1993. This is the ninth one, but these differences make me sad. Look at the difference, old, new. Like, these are the ones I remember from my childhood, and I'm, I'm a 2002 baby, so like, who am I to talk? But I just love this so much more than that. And even like the font, um, I really like how it's in that, it like, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, let's just, can we just appreciate these Goosebumps illustrations? I love them. He's, he's creepy. This one also really creeped me out when I was a kid. And I don't think I've read that. Something about the camp ones really got to me. I was such a like anxious attachment child that I never went to summer camp or anything. So those ones always freaked me out more because it was like, your parents aren't there. What can happen? A bunch of people you don't know. So those ones really scared me. And I have three right here. So it'll be fun to, I guess, revisit those. And those are the ones that creeped me out the most when I was a kid. So on to the next book. I don't know what it is, but let's, let's do it. Let's make some lunch. Butternut squash ravioli and a brown butter sauce. Second time making butternut squash in this vlog. Second time making brown butter. I'm kind of obsessed with it. Okay, we are eight hours in. I just finished Shocker on Shock Street, and you know what? It was pretty good. I kind of enjoyed it. It follows these two kids. It was like shorter, and also the audiobook had like a bunch of sound effects and was like fully voice acted, and that was really enjoyable. So I think that's part of it. I am getting kind of tired. <sighs> but... I mean, that's just because I'm, you know, around my house doing stuff. I'm going to keep listening to audiobooks right now. I'm definitely going to take a break to physically read soon. But yeah, I, I'm doing okay. I just started The Haunted Mask 2. Anyways, Shocker on Chalk Street follows these two kids who are kind of on like a, they get like an exclusive tour of a movie set. And it's like a ride experience deal. And her dad is the producer of the Shock Street movies. And a shocker on Shock Street movies. And so she's doing that. They're doing that. Can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> um, they're doing that. Maybe I'll make some tea. And like things get scary. And maybe the things aren't from movie. Maybe they're real. And uh, I did enjoy the twist here. Spoiler alert. They find out that they're, well, they don't find out actually. We find out as readers that they, the two main characters are actually animatronics as well. And that's how it ends, which is kind of fucked up because they like break down and then they get their memories wiped, a new memory chip inserted in them the last, the next day. So that's kind of crazy. That's a little existential. That's a little AI debate. It's a little Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> so I'm that one was kind of fun. I I was surprised by how much I enjoyed that one. And just like the fully produced audiobooks are really, really fun. I have been liking those. But yeah, I am still working on stuff around the house. I am just tidying up. Hello. We are nine hours and 20 minutes in. I finished The Haunted Mask 2. It was fine. I didn't read The Haunted Mask in this vlog, but I've read it before. If you don't know what it's about, it's this girl who steals this like cursed mask and it gets stuck on her face. And honestly, it's one of the better Goosebumps books. I really enjoy it. So I was pretty excited to read the sequel. And it does include appearances from our girl, Carly Beth, which I did appreciate follows her, two of her friends from the first book, but it's basically the same events. I've read two sequels today, and I've also read, I think I've read the sequel to The Night of the Living Dummy before, and kind of just how I feel about the Goosebumps sequels, like, 
I don't think it's necessary. So, I'm also halfway through Night in Terror Tower. I am taking a break from audio and I'm gonna pick up The Curse of Camp Cold Lake. I googled the scariest Goosebumps books just out of curiosity and apparently this is like the scariest one. So it makes sense why I was so scared of it as a kid, even though I didn't read it. <laughs> but I'm really excited to read this one. I have high expectations. Okay, this one is crazy. The main character just decided to pretend to kill herself, pretend to drown herself, so people will feel bad for her because she's getting bullied at camp. That's crazy, but also real. Okay, I am like 10 hours and 15 minutes in. I just finished my eighth book. This one was crazy. I really enjoyed it. I had fun. It was kind of like a mean girl story. This girl goes to camp, she gets bullied, and she tries to drown herself. Um, and when that when she does that, she like almost dies and goes into this like ghost afterlife realm, meets this girl who's like so excited, this ghost girl, who's like, oh my god, now I can have a best friend. And then the rest of the story follows the ghost as she tries to kill the main character so she can have a friend. Friend rescues her from the ghost girl because she's like, you tried to do the same thing to me last summer, I'm not gonna let you do it again. And she's like, oh my god, thank you so much for rescuing me. And then her friend's like, Psych, actually, she did kill me last summer. I'm a ghost too. I just don't like her. So now you can be my best friend. And the ending heavily implies that the main character died. This one was crazy. I liked it. I had fun. So yeah, 10 hours in. St going strong. Gonna do some chores at home, at the house now. And um, keep listening to A Night in Terror Tower. Good morning everybody it is 7 30 in the morning we are 12 hours into the challenge we're halfway there and i hope my phone isn't hooked up to the bluetooth of my car so you can hear me but it's cold as fuck this morning it is 35 degrees out and my car is frosted and i'm so cold but i'm going to the gym because I haven't been to the gym in a few days. So that's what I'm doing. It's leg day. I don't wanna do leg day, but it's leg day, so. Okay guys, I am at work. I am 14 hours in. Obviously I'm at work, so I'm not gonna be spending my whole day reading, but when people aren't in the store, I will try to get some reading done. Brought my little TBR. I am pushing through. I also have to finish the challenge today because my girlfriend and I's anniversary is tomorrow and no fucking way am I gonna be reading Goosebumps on our anniversary. So that's what I'm doing. I'm at work 10 to 6 so I got some time. It's a Monday so it probably won't be that busy so I'm gonna do some reading and yeah I finished I Live in Your Basement which was fine <laughs> the idea of this kid like getting calls and stuff and getting like letters say like signed from somebody saying i live in your basement that is creepy i'll give you that but spoiler alert for the ending it kind of just ended with like it was all a dream except it was a dream of the monster that lives in his basement that was dreaming that he was the main character and it was just kind of weird it wasn't like a bad ending or anything, but I just feel like pretty whatever about this one. I am starting to get to the point where the Goosebumps books are like bleeding together. And <laughs> it's not, 
I, I'm, I am definitely, I listen to a lot of YouTube and I listen to a lot of audiobooks. I like to skip back and forth between things throughout my day, but I can't do that now. And just having goosebumps going into my brain is definitely driving me a little crazy, but that's, that's fine. It's okay. Anyways, that's what I'm up to. I'm at work. And I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. But 14 hours, only 10 hours left. I can totally do that today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm also currently listening to um, How I Learned to Fly, I think is what it's called. This one is so mid. <laughs> it's just pretty boring. Is how I feel. But I... I'm going to listen to it a little longer until I get any customers and then I'll start picking these up again. But yeah, I just found out that today is R.L. Stein's birthday. Happy birthday, Libra King. I love you, R.L. Stein. It's everything to me. But yeah, it's his birthday today. I don't think I've mentioned it on here before, but I actually have met R.L. Stein which I'm just kind of like flexing that a little bit. I met him when I was in like sixth grade and I gave him a, uh, I gave him a drawing that I made of him. And it was when he was writing new Fear Street books again for the first time in like decades. So that was really cool. And I have a signed copy of that that I will show off later. But yeah, just had to hop on here to share that news. October 8th, R.L. Stein Day. <laughs> I'm almost 18 hours in. I have finished 13 books, not averaging one per hour like I was hoping, but that's fine. I just finished Welcome to Camp Nightmare. It was fine. I didn't, the camp ones, even though I've only read two and I have more to read, there's like five summer camp Goosebumps books, which makes sense because it's scary. It's a great setting for scary, but so I thought this was fine. <laughs> I am starting to get tired of this challenge. <laughs> I was having a really good time up until like two books ago. And now I just like, I just want to watch like a normal YouTube video <laughs> or like listen to a book that's not this. Uh, I don't think anybody was meant to read this many Goosebumps books in one day but here I am and I'm gonna push through guys. I got this. So it's been a pretty slow day at work. So I have been able to read a lot. I'm like three quarters of the way done with Go Eat Worms now. Sorry if the background music is loud, but I'm just listening to some jazz. But yeah, I finished this. This kid is going to camp and his, his fellow campers keep disappearing. It was okay, and tw uh, the twist was kind of crazy though. Like, I don't know how I felt about this <laughs> because it was literally added in on the last page. He finds out that he that this was actually a a like camp, a like boot camp to see if he was brave enough to go on this like science thing with his parents. And they're like, we're gonna go to the most dangerous. So his parents literally pop out at the end and they're like, surprise, these kids aren't actually dying. We did this to prank you. And they were like, we need to see if you could handle the most dangerous place in the universe. He says, where? It's a very strange planet called Earth. It's very far from here, but it could be exciting. The inhabitants there are weird and unpredictable and no one has ever studied them. 
Earth? It sounds pretty weird, but it could never be as dangerous or as exciting as Camp Night Moon. Really? This, I think this might be the most annoying twist for me so far. I read this whole thing and that's what they give me. I'm tired. I've had enough. Yeah, I'm halfway through Go Eat Worms on paper and then I'm also listening to The Girl Who Cried Monster while I'm doing stuff around the store. It's fine. <laughs> I'm really tired, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, this one is about a boy who really, really is obsessed with worms and he cuts a worm in half one day, which is kind of fucked up. Um, and all the worms like look at him and <laughs> he's like, whatever, that's fine. And the worms start taking out their revenge on him. So also kind of a whatever book. I am so tired. I've had enough but I still have like, how many more hours? Six hours? That is not that bad, honestly. I'm in the home stretch. So yeah. I'm leaving work right now. I am still tired, but I just hit 20 hours. So I feel like I have a second wind. I'm, I'm excited, I'm only four more hours. I'm in, I'm in the end of it. I finished Go Eat Worms, which was also fine. <laughs> You find out his sister was the one playing like the worm pranks on him the entire time. But then at the end, in the last like five pages out of nowhere, there's been like many earthquakes throughout the book. And I guess I should have seen that coming, but a giant worm comes out of the ground. And then he's like done with worms. It gets scared away by this big bird mod paper mache model and then he's like, okay, I've had enough of worms. I like butterflies now. And so he starts pinning butterflies. And then at the very end, literally like last three pages, he sees a giant butterfly coming towards him with a giant pin. Which honestly, that ending is so fucking funny. It's kind of camp. So I feel like I have to give it points for that. I am almost done with The Girl Who Cried Monster. And I'm enjoying it. It's pretty creepy. I purchased a few Goosebumps books for my Kindle that I haven't had access to because they were on Kindle for only like $2 each. So I'm probably gonna dig into those. I'm also physically reading the horror at Camp Jelly Jam, which is pretty good. Like I'm having fun and I didn't realize like how much I remembered it from when I was a kid. So I am having a good time. Anyways, I am feeling good. I'm in the home stretch. Bye. Hello, it is 10.47, no, it's 10.30 something, and I am 21 hours and 47 minutes in. I am so close, two hours left. It is like already too late and I don't wanna, I, I just wanna go to bed, but it's fine, I'm almost done. I took a break to put up some Halloween decorations and since I last checked in, I have read The Horror at Camp Jelly Jam, and I actually really enjoyed it. It was fun, it was creepy, and it was, a, it was, it was pretty crazy, actually. I'll talk more about it in the morning and my, like, little recap, I think. And then I also read, oh, I can't remember what it was called at all. Oh, It Came From Beneath the Sink, and that was also really fun. It was so stupid, but I really enjoyed it, and I had a good time, and it was also really fucked up. So, that is what I've been reading. I am about to maybe start another book on my phone. I have Let's Get Invisible, and I also have these two, which I'm not, like, super excited about reading them. And I still have to finish The Girl Who Cried Monster on audio because I have that on audio. So when I'm feeling so tired and I wanna to go to sleep, I can listen to that on audio. So I am ready to be done, <laughs> but we're almost there. It is 12.17. I have like a little over 30 minutes left. I'm so tired. Usually I go to sleep by like 11 and I'm really sleepy, but I'm almost done. I'm so close. I'm so ready to be done with this. Um, yeah, 
I will update you on what I'm reading in the morning because I'm just like so tired. I'm listening to the audiobook of The Girl Who Cried Monster. It's going to end like perfectly at the 24 hour mark. We're doing good. I'm exhausted. I'm going to play Candy Crush while I listen to this audiobook. It's 1 a.m. 24 hours. I'm done. I'm going to go to sleep and I will check in with you about everything I read, give you my opinions tomorrow. Any kind words for Arl Stein on his birthday? Happy birthday, R.L. Stein. I love you. If you're watching this, I love you. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Message me. Follow me on Instagram if you want. It's in the description. I love R.L. Stein. Even though this past 24 hours was painful. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Hello everybody. It has been like a week since I filmed the video you just saw and I'm here to give you an outro to give you some of my thoughts on the books that I read. We're gonna go over them really quick. I'm gonna talk about my favorites, my least favorites. Obviously I mentioned I am going to be doing a um, tier ranking video of all of the original 62 Goosebumps books but that is not for a while. So Let's just go through what I read. I have my little laptop pulled up so I can just look at them all easily. My least favorites that I read were The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, The Return of the Mummy, The Haunted Mask 2, How I Learned to Fly, and probably Go Eat Worms. All of those just felt kind of whatever to me. I didn't like the sequels. I mentioned that earlier, so I'm not gonna go too far into it. My favorites were, one moment. It Came From Beneath the Sink, The Horror at Camp Jelly Jam, The Curse of Camp Cold Lake, Why I'm Afraid of Bees, which I don't even think I talked about, <laughs> um, and Stay Out of the Basement, and One Day in Horrorland. The rest, We'll also go over really quick, but those were all of my favorites. We're just going to do a quick little rundown of all of them in case I missed it in the video. The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, talked about it a little bit. I just did not really like it. It just kind of sat wrong with me. Uh, one Day at Horrorland is one of my favorite Goosebumps books. It is also specifically one of my favorite episodes of the series, the 90s original series, but one thing about it that I didn't like is that the ending was different from the show. And I like the show ending way better because it's a lot darker. It This family goes to this part called Horror Land that they find out is run by real monsters and it has all of these scary rides and stuff. And it ends in the show with them like driving off a cliff <laughs> and presumably dying. And that is just like a really dark ending. It was... I don't know, it matched the tone of the episode, and I, I like those Goosebumps episodes and books that just like really go there and you're like, oh shit, okay. So I really liked the book, but I like the episode better, I just like the ending. Vampire Breath was pretty decent, it had a fun twist, and I liked the time travel element, I liked the vampires, it was fun. Stay Out of the Basement was definitely a highlight as well. Just classic Goosebumps book. It's the second one in the series. If you haven't read any of the Goosebumps books, this would be a really good one to start with. Return of the Mummy, boring, sequel, didn't really enjoy it. Already went over that. A Night in Terror Tower is a classic. This one was pretty fun. I really loved it as a kid and it's definitely not like one of my favorites or anything, but it's a solid classic Goosebumps book. A Shocker on Shock Street kind of surprised me, shocked me, if you will. It was pretty fun, and uh, I mentioned I really liked listening to the audiobook with the sound effects, and the twist ending kind of got me. Haunted Mask 2, another sequel. Eh. Okay, Why I'm Afraid of Bees, 
was really funny. <laughs> Um, I actually really enjoyed it because it was just so out there and kind of campy and just so stupid that I just had a good time. And it just follows this kid who just like hates his life so fucking much and decides that he, he sees like this advertisement for like a body swap clinic in his town, which is crazy. Like, what does that mean? Um, and he swaps bodies with another 12 year old. But unfortunately, it gets messed up and he gets into the body of a bee. It's basically the plot of The Fly, but for kids. And it was just so bizarre. It was so funny. The Curse of Camp Cold Lake was, um, it was really good. That was maybe my favorite one that I've read. Uh, it just like, it really went there. It was really fucked up. It had that like dark ending. I already talked about it, but would definitely recommend that one. And it was one of like the last Goosebumps books. So I was surprised to have enjoyed it that much. How I Learned to Fly was just boring. I don't really have like anything else to add to it. I just thought it was pretty boring. It's about this kid that learns how to fly. I, the ending was fine. <laughs> I don't have much to say about it. The Girl Who Cried Monster is a classic Goosebumps book and I had a good time with that. I don't really have any notes. This was at the time in the video where I was really kind of struggling, but it was fun. Uh, the horror at Camp Jelly Jam is like definitely one of my favorites. Honestly, Camp Cold Lake and Camp Jelly Jam were probably my two favorites. This one is like an eldritch horror, cosmic horror kind of vibe. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really fun and it was just like a fun, crazy little book. I, I really liked that one. Be Careful What You Wish For turned out totally fine. Wasn't culturally insensitive as I was concerned. It was a totally fine Goosebumps book though. Nothing notable to write home about really. She keeps making these wishes. Everything goes wrong. It's like monkey's paw vibes. Go Eat Worms was fine. It came from Beneath the Sink was pretty good. I enjoyed that and I had a lot of fun reading it. Kind of similar to Why I'm Afraid of Bees where it was just such an out there premise that I enjoyed it. And I just love, it follows these kids that find this like evil sponge underneath their kitchen sink. And it's crazy. And they figure out, like it follows them trying to find out how to defeat it. The sponge thrives on bad luck. And so it causes like all of these issues for them. And it's just like super out there, really funny. The ending is perfect. I would totally recommend watching the episode of this. I just watched it the other night and it was so stupid, but so fun. And then last, second to last, I read I Live in Your Basement, which was fine. <laughs> Another one that was totally fine. I already talked about it, so I'm not really gonna go into it. And then last, I finished, I guess this isn't really the order that I read them in, but whatever. This is just what my like Goodreads reading challenge had them as. I read Welcome to Camp Nightmare, which I also felt like fine about. I did watch the Goosebumps episode of this. It was like one of the two-parters. I watched that a couple days ago and that was really funny. So I would really recommend that one. It had... It just had so many crazy moments and I really enjoyed that. So those are all the Goosebumps books I read. I read 18 books in 24 hours, which I, I think is pretty good. It's not too bad. I had a fun time doing this challenge, like most of it, but I do not think I will be doing this again unless this video goes crazy. I don't know. Like and subscribe if you really enjoyed it comment down below. What are you, what's your favorite Goosebumps book? Maybe I'll do one again in the future, but I don't think I'll do it again where it's just one specific author or one specific series because that was mind numbing. It was kind of fun. Like parts of it was really fun, especially like the beginning <laughs> and the end, but just, I don't know. I got really bored of just only being able to read like the same kind of like formulaic thing even though I really enjoy Goosebumps. So 
that is all I have for y'all today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of a longer one. So if you stuck around to the very end, I really appreciate you. And yeah, like and subscribe if you want, leave a comment. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Who knows if it'll happen, but this is two out of three of my fun Halloween October series. So I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy the next video that I'm actually filming today. So that is all I have for you today and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.